It's looking at practical problem on page 239 for exercise 2-2b. Again, this is parallel to what has been assigned in the A series that you must submit within Cengage. Let's talk through this and see what we have. Bert Garo is a waiter at LeBron House where he receives a weekly wage of $75 plus tips for a 40-hour work week. Garo's weekly tips usually range from $300 to $350. A. Under the Fair Labor Standard Act, the minimum amount of wages that Garo must receive for a 40-hour work week is... So in the text on page 2-6, we see the information for tips, and the te textbook points out that a tip is a, g a gift or a gratuity that's given to by the customer to the employee for some service. And so within here, a tipped employee is one who engages in an occupation in which tips of more than $30 a month are customary and regularly received. And so then it gives further down here, in 1996 the Business Job Protection Act froze the minimum cash wage retire required for tipped employees at 213 per hour. Tips received by the employee are credited toward the remainder $5.12 of the total minimum wage. So we're still looking at minimum wage of $7.25 per hour but $2.13 of that can come from tips. If tips received do not amount to at least $5.12 per hour, the employer must increase the hourly rate of pay so that the hourly wage plus the equivalent hourly rate of tips equals a minimum of $7.25 per hour. So within here, just to clarify, we need to, we've got two components. We've got the 213 and we've got the 515. 512, excuse me. 512. And which of those is the wage portion and which of those is the tip portion? So for us, this 213 is classified as the wage and the 512 is classified as the tip. And so, with that in mind, the employer can pay the 213 an hour and when you go out to eat, you're helping to supplement the tipped dollars of 512 per hour. Now, for this employee, going back to what we have, uh, receives a weekly wage of $75, so $75 for the wage. And the other piece, 300 to 350 for the tips. And this is for 40 hours. And according to our book, on page 2-6, th there was an exercise where they took the dollar amount for the wage, divided it by the number of hours, and determined the hourly at that point, just to do a quick check. So that's what we're going to do. $75 in wage, divided by the 40 hours. One. 0.875 or 1.88 which as we see uh, that 188 is not high enough we could now turn it around at that 213 as the wage times the 40 hours the amount that should be received 8520. And so, in answer to part A, the amount that must be received for that wage portion for 40 hours is 85.2. 20. $85.20. So in part 
B of this, since LeBron House is in violation of the FLSA, the additional amount it should pay Garo each week to meet the minimum wage requirement for a tipped employee is. Now, the piece that we're short at this point that we are certain of, it's not just 80, uh, 85.20 is the required. Uh, right now, they're only at $75. So for that portion, it needs to be an additional $10.20. But then we also have to make sure that that $300 in tips is adequate. So $300 in tips divided by our 40 hours, um, that comes out to $7.50. So it is that portion is okay. We need this additional portion for covering the wage part for this employee. Now off to the side note, I will say that for a tipped employee, $7.25 minimum wage, and if we were had that 40 hours, and this goes for any employee actually, the minimum is $2.90. For a tipped employee then, we have the 213 times 40 going to be the 8520 as the minimum and then the 512 times the 40 is the other piece $204.80 as a minimum so this is a minimum for 40 hours for the wage of a tipped employee and this is the minimum for the tips of 40 hours and um, typically in my face-to-face -face classroom we keep those totals someplace at our fingertips so that each time we're looking at an employee we can quickly see the requirement. Some additional theory that I wanted to talk about in here on page 2-6 there's a paragraph right above the example that it says, in order to take the tip credit, employers must notify the affected employees of the minimum wage requirements and of their intention to take the tip credit. This information can be provided orally to the employees, meaning it doesn't have to have a, a form with it, but that does need to be communicated. There are some other details below that example for tips and that the tips are the actual property of the employee and so the employee is allowed to take a portion of those tips. I wanted to point out some other pieces. Uh, if any portion of the tip is turned over to the employer then they cannot take the, the credit. Instead it goes the employee is paid minimum wage at a minimum. Let's see, other pieces that we have. Below the over the line. At some point we're going to see about tips that if we work for a large institution then there's some additional information that is required and I'm not sure that might be in uh, chapter 4. So we're going to keep track, keep that at our uh, forefront I'll say or in our back pocket. Uh, we are, we are going to see something about tips in Chapter 3, and yep, in Chapter 4 it's where the large food and beverage establishments that have customary tipping and normally have more than 10 employees on a typical business day, then they have another requirement. So we're going to be seeing that in Chapter 4. So keep your heads up on tips, questions or problems, let me know. Otherwise, off we go.